Hi, I'm Paul with Madcap Software, and today I'm going to tell you what is brand new in Flare 2024 R2. This release is all about the ability to generate PowerPoint output. So, yeah, you can single source your content from a Flare project. No need to copy and paste things uh, from Flare into PowerPoint. You can just generate it. So what this means is we now have a new uh, output type for PowerPoint. We also have a couple of new page layout templates uh, in, with a design that works well with PowerPoint. What I'm going to do first in this video is I'm just going to take you through real quick steps just to show you how quick and easy it is to generate PowerPoint output. Then I'll just kind of take a step back and I'll go through uh, other sections in a bit more detail to just kind of fill in the gaps and show you how it all works and maybe answer some questions that you have along the way. So let's get started. Let's create some PowerPoint output. So I have in this project uh, some topics and I've added them into this TOC file that I've named PowerPoint. All right, so I have those pieces. Another thing that I'm going to need is a page layout. So here under resources, page layouts, I already have one, but I'm going to add a brand new one here that works best with PowerPoint. So I'm going to use this 16 by nine one here and I'll name this PowerPoint or whatever else I want. Click add, there it is. So one thing I can do in here to give it a little bit of pizzazz is add a new page. And I'm gonna add a first page. You can see it's right there. And maybe I wanna come back to the normal page, copy that uh, body frame and go back to my first page and let's paste it. And then I can just maybe move this in. You can do all kinds of things in a page layout but this will just kind of give it a little bit of a different look for the very first page of that slide deck. Now let's go into the project organizer and under targets, I'm going to add a brand new target and I'm going to add PowerPoint and let's give it a name in here. We'll call this one PowerPoint 2. Click add. Here it is. So what are the pieces that, we, that are involved? Well, there's that TOC file. I added that PowerPoint one, let's connect that. The page layout, there's my PowerPoint one. Let's save that, let's build it, right? So it's finished and let's open it. And here's how it looks. You can see there's my first slide with the extra space and then all these other slides in the PowerPoint. Now, there are some other things we can do. For example, maybe we wanna make this first page fancier, maybe with a background image. So in the rest of the sections of this video, we'll go through these things and I'll change the look of it a little bit. The first thing you're going to need for PowerPoint output is of course, content. And so in this Flare project, I've got several topics in here. Now, in a real life scenario, I probably would have what seems like a gazillion topics in here, or at least a lot of topics. Uh, but this is simplified in here uh, just for demonstration purposes. But I've got my topics in here. All right, so what content is going to be able to uh, make it into a PowerPoint output? Well, most of the main types of content, uh, text and headings and bullets, images, you're not gonna have any problems with that. And expanded text like we have here, that can go in uh, tables and uh, links, images. Those are all gonna be brought into the PowerPoint output. Now, of course, there's all kinds of content that you can create in Flare, and some of it makes sense in a PowerPoint presentation. Some of it doesn't, and it isn't going to be supported. But if you're used to seeing something in PowerPoint, chances are it's going to be supported. One of the things you can do is look in the online help and we have this uh, information about supported features in PowerPoint output. And you can look at some of these things and there's certain special behavior with, with some things. For example, drop-down text. Well, that's gonna become expanded uh, instead of becoming a link like it does in online output. Equations, those are exported as images and so on. So you can go ahead and check this information out. 
Something to keep in mind is that each topic from Flare generally becomes a slide in PowerPoint. However, you might have some topics that are kind of long, like this one right here on owls. Well, it was so long that it was actually split into multiple slides. One thing that you can do if you need to is go into your project and you can insert page breaks like right here or using your styles uh, in case you want the slide to break at a certain point. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you generate that PowerPoint output, each of these elements, a heading, a paragraph, subheadings, and lists, and things like that, you're going to notice that each one of them is placed in its own box. So just determine which content and which features you want to be included in that PowerPoint output. And like anything else, you can condition things in, out, do whatever you want. You are single sourcing here. Now, PowerPoint output, it's sort of a hybrid type of output. So how are people consuming this type of output? Well, online, usually you're showing an online uh, PowerPoint presentation. However, it also has elements of print output. So uh, one page after another, except they're called slides. So it's sort of like a PDF output, but you're going to PowerPoint. So now that you have your content, you need to add a TOC file. And I already have some in here. This one is really designed for my online help and a couple of PDFs in here in Word. And I'm going to add one for PowerPoint. So I'll just give it that name and add it. And it's just like any other TOC file. I'm just going to click and drag the things that I want in here in the order. So the thing you need to remember about this, because this is a hybrid output and really this uh, TOC file isn't a generated TOC in your output, it is an outline. So it is all about which topics are included in the output and what order. And I've gone ahead and added all of these other topics in here, but of course there are probably going to be lots of topics in my project that I don't want to be in here. That's okay. Just don't add them to this. This is an outline. You actually can have a generated TOC in your PowerPoint output. Most people probably aren't going to do something like that, but that would be controlled in your target, which we'll get to. Now, this might be all that you need to do with a TOC file, what I've just done right here. However, uh, you can also come back into this and open up the properties for these different nodes to do a little bit more customization. And we'll come back to that as well. Now, because PowerPoint output is kind of like print-based output, you're going to need uh, at least one page layout. You can add more, but you can get away with just having one. So I'm going to come in here into resources under page layouts. You can see I've got one in here. And if I open this up, you're going to see it has certain characteristics. It's got these frames in here. This is a body frame. That's a header frame. And it has a certain size. It is uh, also a portrait. So it is uh, taller than it is wider in here. All right. I could use that if I wanted, but I probably want to do a, a landscape page layout because that's just going to look better in PowerPoint output. That's what most people do. So I am going to right click page layouts and add a brand new one. Now there are lots of templates in here. These right down here, these landscape templates 4.3 and 16.9, these are the ones you probably want to use for PowerPoint. The difference is this one is kind of a standard and this one is widescreen. I kind of like the widescreen. I'm going to select that. Uh, I named it PowerPoint and I will just click add. So there it is. It's wider than it is tall. And this particular uh, template starts out with just this normal page type. And I could just use this. And so all of the slides in the PowerPoint output would have this body frame. So these uh, kind of a half inch margin right here all the way around. And maybe that's fine, but I could do something else. I can add another page. I can add several if I want in here, and I'm going to add this first page type. And so you see the F over here and it's selected. 
and it is it's got the same uh, dimensions and everything, but it's missing a uh, body frame. I can just go in here and copy this one, go back and paste it in there. But maybe I want this one to what's come into, you know, one inch in here. So I could do, do it that way by dragging and dropping, or I could double click it and I could put, you know, settings in like this and a background. There's all kinds of things you can do with a page layout but you're gonna need one for your PowerPoint output. So just set it up as it makes sense to you with whatever needs that you have. I am going to save this one and we'll move on. So we've got content, we've got topics, we've got page layout in here. Um, we've got a TOC outline. And what else do we need? We need a target. So come in here to the project organizer, right click on targets, add target. And I am going to come in here and select PowerPoint. I'm gonna give it a name. I'll just call it PowerPoint like you see here, click add. So some of the main things that you need to do inside the target are right here on this general tab. And as you can see, there are many, many tabs in here, many, many options, but you're only going to probably use you know, some of them. Uh, of course, you need to go and pick out that uh, TOC file, which we have as PowerPoint. Now, I can go and select the page layout as well. You can see mine right here. Now that's probably a really good idea if the page layout is very simple and straightforward, but if you wanna get a little bit fancier, which we're gonna do here, you can actually go into that TOC file and connect it to the page layout file that way. And that's what we're gonna do. Every output type in Flare changes in the target editor. Uh, some of the files are the same across all of the output types and some are unique. So we have PowerPoint here. And so we get this PowerPoint options tab down here and we can provide metadata for this PowerPoint file. And I could put in a title, the author, subject, so on, all the way down, just like you can in a regular PowerPoint uh, presentation. So you might want to fill that out. And of course, there are lots of other standard things you do in a target. You might have conditions set in your project and you want to include or exclude certain content um, based on those conditions. And you can use variables, you can override variables. So there's lots of things in here. And the advanced tab is also another one that you might be interested in because you're going to be able to do some things in here that are related to print-based output. But a lot of these uh, tabs in here, you might just end up ignoring. Now we've uh, completed the main things that we want for this, so I'm just going to save. Now I'm looking at this PowerPoint output that I generated previously from a Flare project and I'm looking at it going, oh, okay, that's fine. But I kind of want this uh, first slide to be fancier. Um, maybe I want a background image on this. Let's go into our project and let's make that happen. There are different ways to do this. Uh, let's go into our topic, which is this introduction topic right here. And you can see it's very simple in here, just this all about birds and there's the presenter. I am going to apply a style class to this body tag right here, which is really controls the whole topic. I'm going to right click it and select style class. There it is, body.bg image, background image. And so there's my background image right there. And if I open up my style sheet, I'm going to show you what was done, body, BG image. So you can see really the difference is that this background image with this bird was set here with a position of center, no repeat, and the background size is cover. That's all that was done. Let's come back here to the topic, scroll down. Well, now this presenter kind of gets lost in here because of the uh, style that it's using. I am going to select this style instead so it is white on that kind of darker background and save that. 
So we're part of the way there. I am going to come back to my TOC file, which is this one right here. Now, instead of controlling the page layout at the target level, I'm coming down here to this TOC file, and I'm going to just double click this to open up the properties for that node. This is the first topic in there, that uh, introduction, which the, the heading is all about birds. And I'm coming into this printed output tab, and I'm going to select chapter break, come down here to select my page layout right there, PowerPoint, and I'm gonna tell it, use that first page right there. And then I will just click okay. Now I'm gonna to come to the next one, characteristics, same thing on the printed output tab. I'm going to select chapter break, uh, select that same page layout, but this time my page type is going to be normal. I'm going to use that one and I'm not going to change in any of the others. So they're just going to use what was last set on this characteristics topic right there. Click save. Now I'm just showing you one thing. There are of course, lots of ways to control the look and feel of things. You're going to be able to use your style sheet, right? And you're going to be able to use your page layout to control things. So this is just one. So maybe experiment with these different uh, files and see what you can do to make the PowerPoint look the way that you want. So now let's just go back to our target and we're going to build this and look at it. All right, it's built, let's double click it. And to view it, you have to have PowerPoint installed and I do. So right there, there is the new look of this. All right. It looks good, but maybe I don't want this white around the edge. Let's go back and do one more thing. I'm gonna close that, go back to my PowerPoint. So it's got this white area around. Maybe what I do is just click and drag this body frame right here. So it takes up all of that space. I'll save it and I'm going to rebuild it. Open it up. There, that's more like what I had in mind. So with just a few simple tweaks, you can really control the look of that PowerPoint output. So now that you have your PowerPoint output, can you actually go into PowerPoint and make changes to the thing? Yeah, you can do this kind of post-processing. However, keep in mind that if you then go back into your Flare source files, make changes and republish, you're going to lose those changes that you made up here in PowerPoint. So if you want to go in and you're like moving boxes around and images and, uh, you know, all kinds of changes, like that and just a lot, a lot of changes, well, you might really regret it when you rebuild. However, maybe there are some really simple things that you do in PowerPoint. For example, you can come up and maybe choose a design, uh, something like that. And you can see how that changes the look of that. Well, that was just a couple of clicks. That was real easy. So if you limit the changes that you make in PowerPoint, uh, you're probably going to be happier because when you rebuild, it would be just be real simple to change those things again. If you've got a lot of changes, that's gonna, that's gonna be a headache to keep track of. So there you have it. PowerPoint output from Madcap Flare. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.